Nadia and I um, both have our own practices as artists, and at the end we'll talk a little bit about that. But um, tonight we're just gonna share some of the work that we've done together. <clears throat> we've been collaborating for nine years. Um, we're not like a collective or like a collaborative duo or something, but we've just been in collaboration for nine years. Um, and, okay, so, um, yeah, we'll talk about some, some of the things that we've done. This is a still from Border Hole, which is the, one of the films. We're just gonna show you a still. We're not gonna show you anything else. But just, I hope this like entices you, even though I just looked and I was like, wow, that looks really blurry. But anyway, um, <laughs> um, I hope this makes you wanna come tomorrow night and see the film. Oops, okay. So, um, Nadia and I both work with our bodies quite a lot in our individual practices and also in our practices together. Um, also with borders, um, both conceptual and physical, and landscapes, places. We've worked a lot um, in different sort of geographical landscapes, mostly in Mexico, which is, um, neither of us are from Mexico, but it's a place that we lived together and also like lived there apart from each other as well. So we both have like a connection to that place. Um, so these have been some gen general elements of our practice together. I, I am from Bogota, Colombia, and I work in my body in performance, in video too. And I am working with that for 25 years around. And I feel interested in that because I think my body is a, a weapon for transform the society and, and to for make a confrontation against the official information from the Monopolio de la Comunicación, el mono. The media monopolies. And I am kind of activist in that way. And I working for many years in different ways, principal online. I have a lot of work online. You can show my work in YouTube, in Vimeo, in my website, in two projects. One is Fulminante and the other is Colombianization. Um, no, I, we don't talk about that today, but if you have interest, we can show a little bit after. And our collaboration is more in the line of experimental cinema. We make uh, these three shorts, Tell Me When You Die, um, a movie and other short and a show together. And we are working a lot too in laboratories, workshops, um, pedagogy in a way. Okay. Um, so my work with my body actually started when I was an undergraduate student in college and I wanted to go make my senior thesis in India, um, which I had, I had been to India on like a study abroad, Buddhist studies program as like an undergrad. And when I was there, and I was also raised Buddhist, so when I was there, I, I was really um, interested in the fact that like there was all these kind of like Buddhist pilgrimage sites that were very, um, you know, people were coming from all over the world to these sites to see them, but I think I hear, is your mic? Okay, sorry. And and like people were coming to these sites, but then they were like there was people who were who didn't have a home who were like living around these sites and asking for money. So there would be these like spiritual people who would come, but then they would be like total assholes to the people who are living on the street. Is that does anyone know what I'm talking about? Okay. Like they would literally be like, get out of my way, but then be like, uh. and I was like, this is really <laughs> weird, like this is a weird phenomena, you know, like specifically. Um, so I decided to make a film about spiritual tourism and that was like my senior thesis. Um, and I was like, I'm gonna go back to India, I'm gonna um, film all these tourists like doing this thing. And I got there and I was like, I'm gonna ask everyone like, why are you doing this? And then I was like, wait a second. Like, <laughs> I was like, I'm the, <laughs> I'm the person, right? Um, so, I ended up like turning the camera on myself and like really centering my own kind of like experience as like a spiritual tourist in that space. And that was when I started to realize that like my body um, could represent like different things in, in juxtaposed to other bodies or places in terms of like 
dynamics of power and oppression in the world. And like as all of us sitting in this room, like bodies are have multiplicity and bodies have different meanings when they're in different contexts. And so I got really interested in using my own body to like signify different cultural dynamics. Um, so that's kind of why I started working with my body. Quieres decir algo más? Okay. Um, this is another sneak. Okay, this is a. St <laughs> I just want to like this is a still from a um, hundred ways to cross the border, but it's like a still that never got into the film. But it's an action that Nadia actually Nadia is the creative producer on that film. Like she organized this was her idea um so i thought it was like an interest and we never used it in the film but i love it, it this was at the mexico city airport um and these are actors that we hired um and it says trump doesn't exist um art free of commercial arte libre de comercio es que yeah art free of commercial anyway so i just want to translate but um if you Uh -huh. See, it's it's part of the work of Guillermo Gomez Vest. So, so I just wanted to show that to you for tomorrow, too, as a little sneak peek. Um, ¿Quieres hablar sobre esto? Okay, this is a still from a film that Nadia and I collaborated with um, Angelo Madsen Minax, who's a documentary experimental filmmaker. Um, this particular scene, we're not going to show you any of this film, but this particular scene is like... Um, uh, a sex scene, like this is like, we're positing that this is like sex. We were all filming each other. And actually that sex of filming each other um, results in, in conception of, of like, like pregnancy. Um, <laughs> and that sort of has the relationship with like, as a queer person, like try, if you're trying to conceive, like, yeah, it could be that you're just, like, filming, like, filming each other, and then, you know, it's like, there's so many wacky things about that process, and, and so many things that are invisible um, in mainstream sort of narratives around, like, getting pregnant or something that, like, we were just like, let's make a myth where, like, you can just have a baby if you all film each other on top of a pyramid. So, <laughs> um, I, you know, we wanted to, like, Basically, the point is is that a lot of our work is about queer representation, and that's very important to both of us. Um, and our work has often um, been censored, actually, which is so funny, like many, many, many times, um, because, like only because we're sort of like representing bodies that are queer and aren't like, I mean, I'm sorry to be so like old, old about it, but like are outside of like the male gate, like seriously, it's like, that's the problem. Um, so I just wanna, wanna say that, like, you know, the work feels important the more it's censored because the question seems old, but it's not. It's still like very valid. And so we've had so many experiences like, and you'll see our work is like, there's nudity and stuff, but it's people like get very hung up on the ways that our body that our bodies are being like shown to get yeah what yes about that uh, for me was different because i am from bogota and colombia the sensation about bodies is different than here and the history about art postpone etc is like not exist like here is is other feeling and the other side we have a a big representation female body in media, no? We are a hot Latina woman. It's like a normal attitude. We we are educated for be like the most, no sé, como beautiful bitches or something like that. And when I begin to work with representation, we begin to confront that from myself, vision of myself. And in a way, that was really, como se dice, liberación. was like a way for liberation, in a way. And liberation in, in front of condition, too, like in front of the romantic love, for example. And I put like my body and my performance uh, in front of a new generation in my country. 
and was a really strong um, process, no? Because I begin to be uh, a kind of mythical, legendary performance <laughs> called La Fulminante in in that like 14 years ago, and that changed my life too, no? And when I begin my relation with you, changed my life too in many ways, no? Because I come from uh, a other kind of relation with people. <laughs> and we begin this, our relation to working in performance, in, in experimental film. Um, we de develop a kind of process to know each other. And for, my, for me, that was really important. And I work a lot in front of that kind of stereotypes and in relation with the speeches about power in my country. And it's only not my country, but in, in relation with political topics too. And we can see something before, after. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> now we're gonna have to switch between the PowerPoint and some videos. So um, this is a still, actually you've seen this. <laughs> You're the only one. <laughs> um, but anyway, this is a still from a film that we made in 2022 called Open is Opening um, in collaboration with um, Liz Rosenfeld, who's a Berlin-based artist. And <clears throat> um, we started this project in March 2020. And we were gonna, we were all on our way to Bogota to have a residency together. And then the pandemic started and we couldn't go. And so we we started thinking like, okay, actually I'm just gonna read my notes right here. Um, we, <clears throat> we wanted at first to make a queer archive of time in our respective countries as the pan pandemic began. We ended up, so we worked for years um, on Zoom, and we ended up making a film about trying to get to each other, about dirt, about family, and about the borders between us. So we were thinking a lot about like dirt and how it crosses borders illegally, and we actually tried to like send mail each other dirt from our countries, and that was a whole thing. Um, I'm gonna show you like eight minutes of it. So um, we, the collaboration came out of having like a romantic relationship together, um, which we're not, we're not in a romantic relationship anymore, in case you want the gossip on that. Um, but we were having a romantic relationship and we were together for quite a long time, you know, for me, <laughs> maybe for Nadia too. And, um, you know, we talked a lot about like our countries and the relationship and the history and the politics between our countries when we were together and those conversations and plus like performative explorations that we would engage in together were what generated this trilogy. And I like say, when I talk about this tri trilogy, I love say it's like each part is a part our, of our relationship because when begin the first part, it's called Tell Me When You Die. It's the same name for the, all the trilogy, but the first part is really sexual, but not hot sexual, but it's sexual and have a lot of body and it's really fun and have a lot of um, like body, naked, and a relation between two with the speech about body too, no? about who are two women in front of a camera naked and enjoy the other one too, in a way. And the second part is more political. Tomorrow is this part uh, will be present in the museum. Uh, this part is more political, have more conscience about who is she and who is me. I am from South America and she's from North America. And what is the relation between both countries and between she's white and I'm not white. And that thing, have more more conscientious, conscientious about that. And the third part is when we finish our relationship, like goodbye fantasy, disappear, this fantasy disappear in that moment. And we have a plan for have a, a residency and we could, and after we have the residency and we begin edit this 
this uh, chart. And finally, Amber decided not to see me anymore for one year. And finally, she finished it along the three part. We can look this three part after. And other thing about this film is we make a lot edition in distance. Before COVID, all people was working in distance, like the past film together. But in this time, we, we live in different countries while we have this relationship. And we have a lot of edition in distance and, and a conversation in, in build this uh, with many material, uh, like, ¿cómo se dice? Obtenido. Re, uh, film it. Film it? Film it in different places, in, in beaches, in streets, in houses, in different countries, in Colombia, in Europa, in Estados Unidos, in Mexico. In, we film, uh, I am a performer artist, it's my, my strong thing, like a, an art. And we not planning a lot, the, the situations, but we have obsessions to you know with the photography with the space and after all the construction of the film is is, hecho, is doing in the edition no we, we give the sense finally sense in this conversation in edition and i think we are amazing editors both of us i am <laughs> i think my one of my big talents is be a a uh, good editor, no, no good camera, but good editor, no. And <laughs> because she told me I'm not good in camera, no, I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking I was she's an amazing. Still, she mentions this a lot, <laughs> but a it's lot. it's bad. It, it, it's that true? I I think I am good in camera, but I I understand you don't like my camera. And now uh, we can look. If you want to talk a little bit more <laughs> about this process. And we we learn. I learn English with this relationship too. Amber learned I Spanish, learned Spanish in that time too because it was an interchange of knowledge. That relation we found. Okay, we're <laughs> we're gonna show goodbye fantasy. Our breakup film. We'll share it with all of you. Okay, so then I guess we have a couple more minutes for, I think Nadia and I are just gonna both talk about the projects that we're working on right now, like um, separately. So, yeah. Okay, this is Colombianization. Uh, I told you it's my actual project. Uh, this is a multimedia project about um, it, the word colonialization is a stigma about her país, her, her country, <laughs> Colombia, sorry. It's in relation uh, yeah. advertisement yeah. and yeah. mythologies about narco, for example, as you know, Netflix have this series called Pablo Escobar. So my country is identified with narcotráfico, cocaína, um, hombres, patrones. Um, Are you still in English? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a project that includes various things. Video performance, performance, uh, cabaret on live, was a big installation in a space, have original music, I work with music videos, I have dembow, reggaeton, trap, eh, with different topics, the topics are capitalismo gore, necropolitica, um, advertisement, um, narco, narco telenovelas. And I represent different kinds of masculinities in relation with that violence, uh, like a president or like, uh, like businessmen, businessmen, hitmen or something like that. And I make this kind of videos. I can show, this is a little video. And you can show, uh, look the project online. Have a website called Colombianization. 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 And this is a little bit. This is a, a parody of uh, advertisement called The Ansberry's Colombia. 
I don't know if you know in South America we have a lot of like the country is a brand, Brazil brand, marca país Colombia, marca país Mexico, marca país Brazil, and all of our countries are selling something for inversionistas and business. And we are selling all in our countries because we are ready for foreign gear, inversion extranjero. Um, uh, <laughs> foreigner investment. And so this is a, a little video, it's a little video about that, and it's a little character about that. I, I make this character on live too, in a show, and it's something like this. Okay. This is a part of that, and this is the website. I have the something a little simple. It's called Colombianization. So you can find here different topics, Brandaland, Plata o Plomo, Gente de Bien, and Capitalismo Gor. And for example, here or here, this is like a series of music videos. Um, dentro del cartel de Medellín, Pablo Escobar colocaba no, no, este al no. mejor amigo de uno dentro del cartel de for Medellín example, para que lo matara. This is like para que se acabara la bronca. Uh -huh. Pero el mejor amigo de uno le explicaba Pablo por qué Escobar. le iban a matar a uno. Escobar. Y si el mejor Escobar. amigo de uno Escobar. iba y le contaba a uno... Este mejor. And this is, this is a video about um, la gente de bien. ¿Cómo se puede traducir eso? Good, good people. Uh, sí, these people like... The people are good. Las personas de bien. Entonces, this, we have a big strike in 2021. Um, People went to the streets for make a lot of graffitis. We have a really terrible time there, like one year of people disappearing, gente desaparecida, asesinados, y fue being assassinated. Muy horrible. Como, mm, It was really horrible. Casi un año de protestas. It was y almost este a year es un protest. video que yo estaba realizando, eh, estaba realizando este proceso y hice este video en relación a eso. Que es this como is a video that she made in relation to this the, moment. The people wants, eh, como quieren borrar la historia, they wanted to like limpiando erase las paredes all the y poniendo bonitas las cosas. Were putting, they wanted to clean the walls y poniendo bonito todo and they wanted everything to be pretty again, bien. like it never happened. And this is reggaeton. This is reggaeton. We can, we can go to the Q and A actually. Yeah, that's okay. Let's do that. Yeah, I was going to talk about a project I'm I'm working on, but I talk about it a lot lately, so <laughs> it's, it's okay. And we don't have a lot of time. Yeah. I'm going to grab one of the microphones. Are there any questions in bar? Can we see the project you're working on? <laughs> I know. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's really, I'm just going to show you an image. <clears throat> I won't talk about this one, actually. This is a collective that I'm um, co creating in Lesbos, Greece. I won't say anything more about it. an artist collective. Um, this is the film I'm working on right now. It's called Cosmic Moose in Grizzly Bearsville. Um, it's about my uncle, Peter Zach Valentine, who passed away last year. And I'm just going to read this because that'll, I have notes and I'll just read it real quick. It's a picture of me and him. And that's a picture of him in his house. So, um, long, long ago diagnosed as paranoid schizophrenic, but choosing to live his life unmedicated, he lived independently, riding the edge between mental illness and magic. Peter was an eccentric, beloved, and respected local legend of the city of Cambridge. Peter called his house, which he named Cosmic Moose in Grizzly Bearsville, his metaphysical laboratory, the place where he developed and practiced his self-created system of electromagnetic arts, which was a complex network of movements, words, and practices to, to protect people from negative forces. In the early 1990s, Peter was not the owner of this three-story house. It was divided into apartments, and he rented one of them, living on monthly disability payments due to his diagnosis of paranoid schizophrenia. So when MIT wanted to 
um, MIT wanted to demolish his neighborhood to develop and build their brand new university park, which was like, as you everyone's aware, like universities do that, you know, they like develop and gentrify. Um, Peter refused to move, insisting that he could not leave his apartment because it was his laboratory for research. So with the support of the Tenants' Rights Association and after seven years of Peter's insistence that he couldn't move, um, along with press coverage and the increasing amount of people who rallied around Peter, MIT physically moved his house to another neighborhood in Cambridge, positioning it at the exact energetic angle which he specified and sold him the entire house for $1. Um, so his was the only house they saved in the development of University Park. Um, all the other homes around Peter's house were demolished as the neighborhood was gentrified. So this film tells the story of Peter and his house. Um, there's a lot more to say about that film, but the film centers around that very odd story about Peter and his house, so at MIT. Thanks for asking. Hey, that was awesome. Thank you both. Um, can you talk a little bit about the process of getting to the actual shots that you film? Like, are you talking about what you're gonna do or what are you doing in your bodies and how do you arrive at that place in agreement or disagreement or whatever? Uh, we, I think many times we make a plan, like we're going with many objects to different places and ready for exploration. No? Usually we went for places without nobody more. Nobody there, no? Like we, we were alone in many places, usually beaches, <laughs> yeah, but other kind of places. But usually we bring a lot, a big bag with many things. And we begin to explore in front of the camera. Uh, many times I say, Amber, I want you to film me like doing this, no? Um, doing this position, or I want to film you doing something, or you told me doing something in front of the camera, but really was a lot improvisation, sure. Some of the images was with more intention, like in mo many of that have a plan, but usually are really simple things because we are we were alone doing all together, no? Alone, and we don't have lights, we don't have anything. Only have a camera and bodies, and sometimes some customs, but we don't have usually nothing more, no? And only in that place when we went to the residency in Germany, Stolpe, in that place we were there like one month or 15 days, I think two weeks. And when we were there, we have time for uh, think before, no, or install something. But usually, yes, the the film there was really, <laughs> but really, but we have a plan sometimes. But never, we never have like big resources for make nothing. Like usually, only have the camera and have our, our intention. And we have the intention make a trilogy. In the first time, we don't have a plan like make a trilogy that appeared in the way, no? Because the first time we make, and the obsession was <laughs> starting over housing. <laughs> the first thing, the other thing is we we went <laughs> to over housing film festival. Uh, we play with the first one, and they refuse us. And with the second one, we have the international mention in the international jury, and it was a really good thing for us. But so we finish our the trilogy always for the open call. <laughs> and also, like, because Nadia is a performance artist, she has, like, she can think of something and see, and she also comes from sculpture. So it's like she's like knows what something's gonna look like to like other people, whereas like I can't see something unless I like look in the th in the camera. So we had this really so a lot of the ideas for like like she could be like okay we're gonna put this 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 and she knew what it was already gonna look like. So she would like kind of create muchos de los escenarios tu creiste. Like she would be like okay this is the action and then I would film because I'm all so better at camera. But 
or something. Yeah. But uh, no, but and then I would be like the one that would sort of like frame it. And then when we were in that situation, we would start the collaboration where it was like, oh, new things would come from like being in the situation. And because there's no, many times nobody say the camera. We put the camera in a tripod and we were in front of. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, yo no dije eso. Uh, we went in front of the camera, uh, and the camera was alone. Yeah. In the, like, put the camera and go and make things, and after back. And I ne we never say the things yeah. after because they spend uh, battery. We don't have a lot of batteries to. Um, was a really, like, beautiful <laughs> way. <to work. laughs> was a really sweet way for work. I never work in that in that way. And I have more collaboration with friends too. Well, now we know that Nadia is better at editing. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about how that goes once you have the footage. Okay. Uh, our edit process <laughs> was, I think I am good in little things. And Amber usually give all the sense for the movies because she have a really good poetry perception. And I think the total, the final, uh, the final work uh, was uh, finished for Amber usually, and I approve. But I am obsessed with little details, and I have, uh, I'm a, I better like in little things, moments, and um, weird way for edition and rhythm. Amber is better. I think she's good in that, but I think I am better. <laughs> I am good in that, in, in that kind of weird kind of edition, like good, 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 good. Um, to in try make effects, effects. In my self work, I work a lot with animation and other things, and chroma key and things like that. But you were, uh, she's better in, in the total, and she's good writer too in a poetic way, way in relation with video. No, because sometimes when you are writing or uh, make a uh, line of edition, you can you can make a lot of things new in front of that. No, for example, sound and for example, text. Yeah, I'm like the drummer, and she's like the guitar solos. <laughs> but I'm also the conductor, so I'll be like, okay, we need a guitar solo, Nadia, go, and then she'll do it. Um, but we're like, that's our most, that's our best place of collaboration is editing. We're really, like, we have it down really well. We both have strengths and, um, like, we can go back and forth really, really well. It's very, like, easy. Um, I was, like, scrolling on Facebook at one point and I saw someone posted this researcher in Australia who had um, uh, recorded, like, all this sound of, um, fish and whales like talking to each other like there was all, it was all this research about like underwater animals like having conversations and I was like hmm and then I listened and all that's all the sound is just that <laughs> it's like all of that is like fish talking to each other <laughs> or whales like singing or something it was really interesting re what and um so that's good by fantasy but also um, Angela Madsen Minox did like a part that um, I w couldn't couldn't do um, the whole like trash can anyway um, but yeah sound but it's the same thing with sound like I'm usually like the big picture sort of like but then Nadia will will make these really beautiful like strange sort of edits and then put them in different places throughout the film Looking now, I was thinking in the relation between us and fishes. Yeah. <laughs> like, all the time we, we were inside the water and the final pair these fishes right. a lot. Like and dying. I think, dying. <laughs> and like, <gasps> and I think have something in relation with that too. But it's subliminal too. Not subliminal, but <laughs> maybe subliminal. If there's not any more questions, let's thank them. Thank you. Thank you, Amber and Nadia. Gracias.